So I got this question from a viewer recently, which is whether I group my clips before I grade them, whether it's a commercial or long form projects. And to answer that question, no, I don't. Hey guys, I'm Danny, a friendly neighborhood colorist. And in this video, let me show you what is grouping and why I don't do it at all. So I have a sequence right here with a few clips. And if you don't group your clips, you will only have two levels, which is your clip level in this dot and the other dot is your timeline level. So you can place your node tree in these two levels, but if you want to group your clips, which is to put a few clips all together in a series of groups, and you can apply the effects before or after the whole group all at once. So I can select all my clips here, click on the first clip, hold down shift, click on the last clip to select everything, right click, and let's do add to new group. And let's label this sequence. So, okay. So now that these are grouped, how I know is with this linking green linking icon over here, I know that these are linked together in a group. And the other way that I can tell is also I have, instead of two dots, I have four dots up here. One with a group pre-clip, and then we have our clip grade, the clip itself, and then the group post clip. So we have one before and one after. And the last one is our timeline level, which will affect everything, whether it's in a group or not. So if you want a visualizer of how this four grouping works, let me see, let me create four. The first group will be your pre-clip. The second one will be your clip itself. The third one is your post clip. And lastly is your timeline. So it works like this, exactly like how it would in a node tree. Pre comes first and then clip, post and then timeline. Just that they are separated out into four different sections. So you must be aware of that. So in our pre clip, what we can usually do here is convert our footage from whatever camera log into our working color space, which is Dominic White Camera in this instance. So I'm going to drag a color space transform and this was shot in red. So I'm going to go with red lock, red white gamut and red lock 3G10 into DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. All right, so this is our IDT. And then in our group post clip, we can do the exact opposite. So I'm going to copy this over and then paste it into our post group, All right? And then this one, let's change the label to ODT, Output Device Transform. And I'm going to go from DaVinci White Gamut into Rec 709, Gamma 2.4. So with just two nodes, we can color manage everything that is sitting in the group itself. And this is the benefits of using groups. You can do the exact action, the exact adjustment onto multiple clips by just doing it twice in the group level. So once you're done with that, the grouping and the color management, we just have to go into our clip level grid and do the balancing. So I've done all the balancing for these clips already. I'm just going to paste this over, paste this, paste this. So these are things that is sitting within the Da Vinci White Gamut color space because in our group pre-clip, we already set it from the camera lock into Da Vinci White Gamut. So everything in our clip level will be, will be sitting in Da Vinci White Gamut. So moving on, once you have done all your balancing, your color balancing in terms of the exposure and also in terms of the white balance, then you can move into your group post clip and outside of the ODT where we are in Rec 9 because this is going from Da Vinci White Gamut to Rec 9 we can use a LUT maybe. So I have my visionary LUTs, such as the Hollywood. This is something that I like to use. So I can just apply this Hollywood LUT in the Rec 9 color space in the group post clip. So I'm going to use a LUT here. And this LUT will be applied to the other clips as well in the same intensity, right? So if I have my LUT here at 100%, in the key output gain, such as 1.0, so I have it at 100%, it will be 100% for all the other clips. And here's where I start to have issues with grouping my clips. For example, for some clips, maybe like this one, you can see that the colors in this helmet is coming out a little bit too much. So this LUT is doing too much on this one clip. 
If I want to reduce the key output gain, which is sort of like the opacity of this particular LUT node, so I can reduce the intensity of the LUT to 0 0.75, something like this, a little bit lighter. It will also affect everything else in the group, which I don't really want, such as on this clip, it's too strong. I have to go even lower, maybe 0 0.5, in order to compensate for that. But then for the ones that can accept a heavier look from the LUT, I can't really do that separately. So in order to have really full control of what's going on in each individual clip, I will have to do it in the clip level. So that is issue number one. And issue number two is when I want to compare my current grade with the Rec. 709. Because sometimes we have to refer back to the Rec. 709 in terms of some of the colors that we are trying to rescue back. Is there any colors that we accidentally crush? And using the Rec. 709 as a reference is very useful for that. So in order for me to preview the Rec. 709 side by side with this current grade I have, I can go into my galleries. I have a toolbox full of direct conversions from log to Rec. 709. So I have my red white gamut RGB into Rec. 9 and I can click on the split screen here and split between steel grades. So you can see that it's not doing the Rec. 9 correctly because what you're seeing on the right over here is the Rec. 9 adjustment plus the group pre-clip adjustment plus the group post-clip adjustment and the timeline adjustment. So I can't directly and very conveniently compare with the Rec. 9 if I'm grouping my clips. In order for me to make it side by side like this, I have to switch off the IDT and also switch off the ODT and the LUT. Then I have my Rec. 9 on the right, but what you see on the left is no longer what is the current grade. So there's practically no way for you to view Rec. 9 and your current grade side by side if you're using groups. And my third issue with using groups is if there is additional clips being added into your timeline, let's say I add this clip here, which is not in a group. So if I click on this clip, you can see that there's no green icon down here. If I add an additional clip, you have to add each new clip into a new group as well, into the current group. Let's say I delete my IDT on the clip level and also the ODT. So I'm just going to use the middle nodes here. If you're interested about this node tree, you can watch this video. It breaks down my whole pro node tree. And this is the node tree that I use for all my projects, as you can see here. So whenever I add new clips like this, I have to right click on the clip and into the groups, sequence one and assign to group. And this is not very troublesome in the sense that I'm adding one clip only. But let's say if there are 10 different scenes and there's additional clips for each scene, you have to go into each new clip and then add it into a specific group. So that takes a lot of, a lot more work, a lot more uh, frame of mind. And you have to communicate if you're not a solo colorist, if you're working with other people as well, you have to communicate or you have to assign someone to group all these clips accordingly. And the person working on the grid will also have to be aware of which group these clips are sitting in, in order to apply the same intensity of the adjustments in a group post clip. So you will see that there is a lot more complications when you start to group clips. It's very good if you have a very organized workflow and nothing is going to change once the offline is being set. But if you're working on a real environment, in a real post-production environment, grouping clips is not really feasible. I'd rather just do everything on the clip level because it gives me so much more versatility. If any new clips come in, I can just import that clip. And if I need to adjust the LUT's intensity, I can do that according to each individual clip. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Please drop a like if it was and subscribe to see more. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.